Um, there does have to be a four degree dead band, so we couldn't do 70 and 71. It won't let you do that. There has to be a four degree separation between the two. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to change it, you just click on that. Okay. Type in what you want, and then anytime you make a change on any of this stuff, it'll always ask you to accept or cancel. Okay. So if you're kind of clicking around and didn't change anything and that pops up, you can just hit cancel, nothing will change. Okay. Um, but when you do do that, if you try to go somewhere else, it won't let you until you it makes you accept or cancel it. Right. So that's how you can change the set points on any of the rooftop or DATs. It's the same. Is there a way to kind of um, like select a certain area and kind of mass change them, like kind of group them to be in the same There is, there is a to be? global modify, but it doesn't really work by area. It works by okay. So like a DAT, you could global modify, but it's going to change every just you know, like an area like you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, or with the rooftops, it's going to change. All of the rooftops are <coughs> set for our P5, so there's a different kind of rooftop. Okay. So it looks for the same type of device. Got it. So now, just to clarify, the RTU has a set point for itself of what it will cool or heat to. Yes. But on, I think it's zone, or RTU 9 yes. has VABs. Those you can set individually, so you could set a VAB box to have a different set point, and it would have so your space temp in that area could be different than what your RTU. It'll just either put it in bypass. Yeah, for R two five the VAB one. Five, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The VABs are what tell the rooftop what to yeah. do. But does the rooftop have a master set point that it will heat and cool between? And then the VABs are independent. It, yep, it gets an average space temp from all okay. the VABs, and that's okay. what it goes off of. And that obviously changes as people adjust the thermostats. Yeah. So for this one, we can change that, get rid of the set point adjust. So look for properties. And depending on your um, the level of access you have, like so if you add someone to the ID, you get to choose how much access they have to it. Okay. Um, there's a view only, we'll go over that when we add people. But a lot of times if you just want someone to be able to get in and see if it's hot or cold, they won't have a lot of these up here. Okay. You're gonna have all of them because you'll be using a store. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to configuration. And this is all in that manual too. Got it. Perfect. Unit configuration. So set point adjustment range. Right now it's five. What are we thinking? Probably twos. Two degrees. So we'll do two. And then again, hey, you change something. We want to accept it. Accept it. Yep. Okay. And then it'll get the purple box when it's trying to save something to the ID. And then it goes away when it's done. Mm -hmm. So then you just go back to the graphics tab. It should change and it'll go to minus two because that's what we're allowing it. So set point adjustment range. To be any point that has a box like this and you want to global modify it, you just hold Alt and click on the box. It'll bring up this screen. And then it's asking where do you want us to look for things we can global modify. And you just okay. always want to do the whole site, the whole building. So yep. we can hit find all. And again, this is all in the manual because it's going to be confusing. Yeah. And then here, yeah, pulls up everything. Yep. So all the available rooftops that are all the same, obviously minus five because it's a VAB rooftop. It's not constant volume. So we can say we want to do two degrees for all of them. We can set to all, and then they all change to two, and then you can apply. So that'll send it out to all the rooftops. Awesome. Um, you can do that with like a room temp set point or any any, any box you can all click on and global model. One thing, just so you, when you put in the back of your head, if you do that for room temps, and if you do like an alt, and you're going to do your data quality, well, the 
who says I'm only 74, unless you, unless they're not on this system, I guess. They might not be because they're little Mitsubishi splits, right? Oh, no, yeah, splits, splits aren't on the IP. Okay, yep, yep. Just, yeah. Those are just yeah. Those are just controlling your local. Yeah, they should just have it running. Okay. Does it have a, does it have a monitor, you know, if, like if it's running or not on the IP, or is it not? No, we don't have anything in okay. the room. No, like okay. a monitor tip or anything like that. I mean, that's something we could always add, but. Oh, for now, that's just. I, I don't want just to just leave them away. Yeah, I agree. Just leave them that might be the, that might be something you think about down the down the road is at least a temperature sensor just to alarm see. you. Hey, all of a sudden yeah. it's getting hot in there. Why? Yeah, and I think that is. I think we talked about that with Isaac when he was here, and I think his servers or whatever. He's got temperature monitoring on his servers. Yeah, that I okay. think can alert okay. you. So as long okay. as some way to alert that there's yeah, that something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four rooftops on this side of the building. You'll notice on first floor there's a drop down arrow, mm -hmm. and that's where all the devices are for first floor. You'll notice on the second floor there is just a drop down arrow, mm -hmm. and that's because all the, the four rooftops over here they feed both levels. Oh, okay. <laughs> so R two U eight feeds up here, up here, and then down on first on the same side. And, well, and same yeah, area. and those are on the Zonex system, so I think that might be. Yeah, and then there's some over so here. Yeah, but like, yeah. <coughs> so some of those existing <coughs> units are on a completely different system than our integrated unit is. So, <coughs> so the ones that are, so I have to control for this area up here on the Zone X system, but if that unit is still controlling, it's downstairs as well. I think or, I think the three units we added mm -hmm. up on this roof. I think they all duck down through the floor and only feed the first floor. Okay. I think the only ones that are be feeding the second floor is that zone X. Oh, I don't think we have any, I don't think we need oh, any zone. No. I could be <coughs> smacking the chain. Of the no, no, I, and that's a good point because I, I was trying to go through the mechanical drawings and I was having a really hard time trying to trace out the duct work. Yeah. I so guess I can just go look real quick and see if there's any carrier sats up here. I'll run through it so you can keep okay. it. Okay. Kind of a side note on that. Is there a way that you can set up the, the load to just do when the mechanical duct yeah. works straight from here? If he puts the file in a location, but then you can just hot link to it. That's kind of handy to be able to look at a rooftop, look at the drawing, go, here's where it's ducted to. So I can add that to the IU. That might so like add another tab that's so if we player. like if I emailed you the plans like off the pro core or something the mechanical yeah the, plans. the mechanical plans and the control drawings those are yeah. really handy to have at your fingertips for right that. yeah yeah here's okay, the ones we have we do I'm going to show how I do red mines on wires. I think that'd be handy just to have a quick link to those. So that you sure, can, sure. Could be really nice. Because yeah, he may be looking at this going, what does RTU5 yeah. feed? Yeah, exactly. Or whatever. You know, I'm hot on the north side of the box. Why? <laughs> yep. So this is what we got. I don't know if you like all the stuff we've added. So that's our back net cable. That's how everything talks to each other. Oh, okay. I would. I'd, I'd oh. take those if I were you. Okay. And then we can even color coordinate some of this stuff if you want for the different units. If you'd be willing to do that, that of would course. Be, that'd be amazing. Here it makes color sense color pretty much. But so yeah, now. once it gets over here, it starts okay. overlapping and I stuff. So. I'm trying to figure out what's what's coming from yeah. the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if you'd be willing to put that together, of course. That'd, be, that'd be incredibly helpful. So I have that one, and then I'll just I'll add another tab here, okay. and it'll be the mechanical okay. version of the account. Okay. So any questions yet or anything? Question about the RTUs. So you got the ERVs attached to them. Is there a separate way to look at those? Yeah, so over here on the side, I have the ERVs. And we're basically just monitoring. Yet we are enabling them based off building pressure and RTU mode. There was a sequence for those. Um, so this is the graphic we came up with. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's a ton of alarms associated with these. That was part of the sequence was they wanted like every alarm they could get from them. And do these 
used to just <coughs> run off the duct static pressure and then a 10% differential between the exhaust and supply. How so they're running off the fan speed is how yeah. we're controlling the speed of the ERV fans. It's 10% of what the RTU fan speed is. Okay. And then we are having an issue with our building pressure. Right now, it just always reads zero. Mm -hmm. um, and I was out here the other day and I didn't have an extension ladder, so I couldn't get on the roof. Yeah. Um, but I did blow in our poly reference and the fans ramped way down. Mm -hmm. So I know it's working, I just, I still need to figure out why. Yeah, it's just staying at zero, but it is still working. I don't, you should never have to mess with the ERVs. Oh, we can go ahead. Does it have a filter alarm in those? Yes, that's coming in. Okay. And we've already been getting so alarms on the ERVs because the duct uh, the building statics now. Yeah. It's just reading zero, so it thinks it's low all the time. Yeah. I think we're just going to end up replacing that BAPI sensor that's up in R25. So I'll walk you through on how to add or change a user. So up in the very top right, and you can even follow along if yeah. you want. There's the little three lines in the arrow. Mm -hmm. Click on that, go to system options. And then operators, the second tab over. Oh, did I not? I might have to bump up your access. don't know if you'll have to log out and back in, but I okay. might. Once you do this, we can go over how do you set and modify Yep. I think the operators and then like you said, schedules are like the two biggest things. That's a list of everyone that has access to the IG right now. I'm on there, obviously, and you're more than welcome to delete me. It is your system. <laughs> I just tell people that because well, I've logged into training. some and there's like a hundred people in there. No one remembers anyone or they don't work there anymore. Can we um, get Mike added to that? Yep. Our tech? Yep. Um, it'll just help you guys if we got maintenance. And Absolutely. And same thing for us. We always add our Carry West service. So if there ever is a service call, our guys know that we put the same password in every ID for them. Cool. And then, so there's like we can click on you mm -hmm. and the roles down here. So right now you're the administrator. If you ever wanted to change that, you could just click on it and it's going to ask to accept. Or if you wanted to delete someone, you would just highlight them and delete them. Mm -hmm. um, and the roles, that, that's a big role in when you add people. Depending on who they are, you got to be careful on how much access you give them because okay. they could get in and start changing schedules or set points or, and it, it tells you what access each role has. So if you do a guest, they can log in, they can only do stuff. They couldn't change set points or any of that. And the standard user, they can do set points and schedules. And then obviously the same as view. Okay. Um, and then just, you get higher and higher level. Um, the only difference between administrator and installer is for commissioning the devices. So you should never have to add another installer. I mean, maybe Cruder Rally would be a good one to have as an installer since they are messing with devices and stuff. But yeah, so just keep in mind when you do add a user, the role's a big deal. Can he require it to wear? If he adds a user, he sets up a temporary user and or a temporary password, but it forces them to change it. Nope. Yep. And can you make it no to where it removes all default you? usernames and passwords? Admin admin. Yeah, that's stuff. all we that's the first thing we do when we set up the ID. That is all out of there. Okay. <laughs> you're right. That that is the first thing we do when we yeah. first turn on an ID. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we want to add someone, we click on the add button. If 
you're okay with us adding Hooter Valley. Or yeah, we can add Jeff in there too. Kevin B. You seem really excited about being in there. Yeah. That first. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do for law campaigns? Our uh, username? Yeah. Uh, Bernard J. And then we're going to hit change password. I'll, before I save this, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to ask for your password. And since you're here, we'll just let them type it in. Mm -hmm. But you can. I like what I did with you. I did one, two, three, four, yeah. Four. And then the first time you log in, it makes you change. So I'm going to uncheck change password? No, we want to leave that there. Well, oh, of course, user did. Oh, that's yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah. So if you did set up a temporary one, you can yeah. do one, two, three, four. And I always exempt them from the password policy because mm -hmm. the new one is ridiculous. <laughs> Will you ever need like commissioning I, ability? I don't think so. Okay. You can make me whatever you want to make me. I don't care. So. <laughs> I think being able to change the scheduling and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All that. So we just okay. did their name. You, <laughs> you only. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey man, I can only see everything. I can't really know. <laughs> You can call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna change Smart. myself to that. <laughs> so it'll ask for their name or a company and okay. then their username. And before you highlight change password, the boxes aren't there. Okay. Um, and then they'll type in a password, or you could do a temporary one. If you did the temporary, you'll do four Caesar change. Got it. And then for temporary passwords, I like to make them super easy. Mm -hmm. It's always exempt from the password policy. Because if you don't, you need so many characters and capitals. And, and then you would pick their role mm -hmm. and then hit apply. So uh, let's just see what you can do. The difference between apply and accept, apply will apply the change but stay on the page. Mm -hmm. If you hit accept, it'll apply the change and close the window. I do that all the time. It's really frustrating. <laughs> if you want to stay on the window, you know. <clears throat> okay. And then again, you can always come back in and add or take away uh, the amount of access people have. Okay. Just by clicking on their name. And then how do we schedule this? The next biggest thing. Yeah. Right. So real quick, up here. Uh, second floor looks like primarily all Zonex, and then um, right down this hallway on this half, there's, it looks like there's one Honeywell stat mm -hmm. that kind of tells me that that unit is probably just standalone, mm -hmm. taking care of one unit. Uh, the rest of this upstairs is on that Zonex on the zone system. Okay, so don't carry your units up here. Yeah, so okay. I can I can probably find an owner's manual for that online for you. That'd be helpful. So kind of. I no. found the, Make I can't remember, but yeah, I found the controller up in the ceiling tiles okay. up there and downloaded a, a unit on how to actually, I mean, it looks like a, a you're setting your sprinkler timer kind of thing, and I yeah, need to figure out how to set our occupied and unoccupied times for that. Okay, uh, I can definitely get that for you. Okay. And all, I can also, if you, Mike, is, our tech is pretty good with this, so mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow or whenever, if he's here, we'll see him, he can also run you. You might also see if you can find the original building drawings, at least for this piece, so you have the duct diagrams and stuff for, so for the stuff, stuff that they didn't do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there would be, is there somewhere there's like the original set of drawings just for right. the new? Or the yeah, existing. this is what I was trying to go off of because it does show. Does it show some of the existing? But it gets so confusing. There's nothing. Yeah, because it shows. Control. Oh, yeah, it doesn't show the existing ductwork, mm -hmm. just the unit. And I don't know. So there's nothing controlled up here from in here. I don't know. Okay. 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 I think that's so primary that would have yeah. the whole okay. history of the yeah. 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 yeah, just one right there. Just so you just what does this do? So you can just so you know what I'm doing up. If something gets in here, they figure it out. Right. Yeah. It's like if you were here, you're here, they don't want to get rid of it. Or we can use it for spare parts, right? right. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Jeff was kind of asking that question. I don't know if it's something that can be done in the future to at least, like, I know 
to set up on the Zonex system, so I'm not going to be able to control them here. But is there a way to add something to it to where I can at least, like, can I check in on the units from here the same type of way? Those are carrier, carrier units, units, right? So I think, I think they, they are. are. All, they're all carrier units. All carrier. There's a different carrier thermostat, and I did this in an old building that we had to add. It didn't give you full functionality, but you could see it, you could adjust set points, and I think we could see like a supplier temperature. Oh, equipment touch, probably. Yeah, maybe that's a little, little tiny gray yep. screen. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, they're just electromechanical units, I take it. Okay, okay. I mean, it's just a way that you can see what's going on. Sure. You don't have all the functionality that you would on, you know, if full you carrier, here, back sure. Car. Sure. Yep. I don't know what the equipment touches run. I'd have to see how much they cost, but I don't think they're that far up from an R2 open board, so we could add an R2 open board to those and then it would tie into the IV just like everything else. It might be something you just need to know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Per unit cost is I mean, it would X be dollars. Sunday something was making noise. My only option was to yeah. jump on the brief <laughs> right. I, yeah, I, I didn't right. know which one it was. Yeah. So. Sure. so that would be yeah. something that would be helpful if it was so we obviously, well, if we have that one that's not cooling, so we can obviously see if it's running or not. We just don't know what area it's actually. So we must only be monitoring the discharge temp. You're talking R29 or whatever it is right now? Uh, eight, the one that the compressor shot. Mike told me that, yeah, the one with the compressor shot nine. controls first floor yeah. and the main, like. Yep, and that's uh, a new one, right? Vestibule type area. Yeah. I believe so. So oh, that might that's be why it. you can see it. Yeah. That's why every, you can see it. Okay. Yeah, everything. All of these, so you can't All of see those it. were like 2019, yeah. I think, is when yeah. the hailstorm was that those all got down. Well, that actually. Yeah, it doesn't even give us an They might be new enough for them if they. You know, they're not ancient. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think 2019 still is when they were all. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. So is when they were all put in. There was a hailstorm and they all got replaced with yeah. engineers. Gotcha. Yeah, so there are options if you ever did want to add those in the future, or and obviously there's more expensive and cheaper options. Yep. Okay. Can you get your one by five? Yeah, seriously. It's tired. <laughs> Alright, so for schedules. Yes. Being that it's one floor, mm -hmm. since the second floor is not set by any of the carrier stuff, normally if you had multiple floors, Depending on where you clicked on in this tree is where you're going to set a schedule for. Okay. So if I clicked on first floor and made a schedule, it's only applying to first floor. It wouldn't apply to second floor if we had it, the ERVs or the exhaust fans. Okay. So here, every time you create a schedule, you just want to click on Mountain View, the very top one. That's the highest hierarchy of the tree. So now when you make a schedule, it's going to pass it down through everything. Tab. We go to the so right now the current schedule is seven days a week. Well, we, if we click on the configure tab, make it click on that schedule. Yep. So Monday through Sunday, six a.m. to nine p.m. Is that? You're gonna, that's going to be cut way down, yeah. right? Yeah. I just say, especially now. Can he do schedules by, I'll call it zone, so the sanctuary. Let's not run that thing full blast seven days a week. If he wants, can you zone it almost? So like, I'll, I'll say the sanctuary, the box, and maybe the, what they're called, the living room, the main foyer area. Sure. Or maybe like the children's wing. So that, I, Right. Why so run it? Sure it doesn't need to be 70 if no one's in right. there. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes, we can do that. Um, I'll have to make some changes. I'll just add more areas. So yeah. instead of first floor, there'll be sanctuary. Did you say the box? Yeah, I said the box. Yeah, that if I think that would kind of go along with, like you were talking about, with looking at the map and figuring what, what goes to what area. If we can have it, it's like the sanctuary on Tuesday nights. We have rehearsal in there. So uh -huh. I want to cool it a little bit on <coughs> Tuesday nights. But other than that, I mean, you do correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like, for the most part, the building is unoccupied on the first floor. 
with a few times where we're going to schedule it occupied versus yeah. the second floor up here is probably more occupied and we're going to schedule it unoccupied yeah. for the most part. Yes, first we won't have a schedule for up here though. It's not you. Yeah. 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 yeah, but yes, you're right. First floor is, yeah. first floor is yep. going to be almost entirely unoccupied. Okay. Like Sunday mornings and some stuff Tuesday night. And the sanctuary has two rooftop units for that. Okay. Yeah. So you're right. So one, one does the underground system and one does all the up high. Yeah. And that was another thing I meant to ask. It's only the two units that feed the sanctuary. Yeah. Okay. So I think RTU three does the underground, and I want to say it might be a six. There's a four. Or four. Like that four. does all the the spiral from across the top. So I wonder if there's a way we can segregate it. Like, okay, here's these two RTUs feed this space. These two or three feed this space. Uh huh. So, because obviously you're going to want those two on the same schedule. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I'll have to break that yeah. down. Seeing the ductwork is is helpful, but it's even if it, even if it was as simple as like if you had a floor plan and color coded and had these two dots, yeah, the yeah. Numbers, show me this area. Yeah. These two dots, right. show me this. Like, well, yeah, if you do, I just have yeah. like yeah. Yeah. there's a way you can create it, or yeah. maybe show them how to create it, but. <laughs> Sanctuary, you have you bring in you attach these two RTUs, yep. and that's a schedule that he can just program. Yeah, I think and that's going to be the easiest way yeah. to go is to really break it down like that. Yep. And awesome. then you can just have an individual schedule yep. for each one of the areas. Yes. yes. Okay. That's exactly so, like Sanctuary, fine. you'll have a schedule in there, it'll be Tuesday and Sunday, mm -hmm. just those two days, and then. Yep. Okay. And if we have an event or something coming up, I can go in and I can turn it on and yep. have occupied. Like, yep. That's. Okay. And with any of those areas, if it's unoccupied and somebody walks in and wants to use it, they can touch the unit and it will at least go occupied for a set period of time? They can press the button. If it's unoccupied, so if the green light is off, they can press the power button. For And every time you press it, it adds 30 minutes up to two hours is where we cut that off. Cool. Because just like the set point adjustment, someone goes up and, yep. and then you come back and it's, it's overridden for 700 hours. Yeah. Someone, you know what I mean? So we limit that at two hours, you can't change that. Okay. Um, and if 30 minutes is too low, we can always bump that up to like an hour each time, but 30 minutes seems... That makes sense to me for now. But it has to be unoccupied. So if the light's green, that's not gonna work. So, yeah. No. Okay. So only during unoccupied can you press the button and it'll override it and then it'll go back unoccupied after the time runs out. Yep. So yeah, so for schedules, I mean, it's going to change a little bit because I'll have to add some more areas. Uh -huh. That's going to take me a little while, but I'll do that today. Um, any questions? We'll just, I guess we can delete this one and start over. Well, it's going to change. It'd be nice for you to have a reference one. Um, yeah. We'll I mean, add even, one. We'll just add one. Even if you can show me, like, if, if we just end up deleting it, if you can show me just how to set a schedule. Yep. I'm sure once you actually go in and create the areas, at least if I've seen how to do it, yep. we can delete this after we create it. And sure. Once you create new areas, then I can go in and play with it. So instead of Mountain View Community Church, you'll click on Sanctuary yep. when it's there. Yep. And then you have to go to the, it'll show you what schedules are currently in there if you're on the View tab. And then you will go to Configure. So that's just a quick, here's what your schedule is from time to time. Add. So if you, that's your existing one, so you can modify that by clicking on it, or if you wanted to add a new one, you just hit add. Yep, and then you pick the type of schedule. If it's a normal one, if it's a holiday, or if it's an override, you'll probably never do override. I, will, I would always just do normal or holiday. Yep, so normal, you can choose that. And then the type of schedule, and it lists off of kind of what each one does. Oh, sure. Um, I like doing weekly. Yep, and then you can name the schedule. So you could do Tuesday night service or yeah. Sunday service or something like that. And then it'll have you pick the days you want, as many as you want. Choose the days. Yep. And then the time. Cool. So okay, eight a.m. to five. Yep. I like typing it in. Yeah. But and then the gray will be the unoccupied and the yellow will be the occupied. And then again, in the 
would ask you to accept it. Yeah, accept it. We'll delete it right away. Okay, so. Yeah. Oh, there's a video. There it is. So had you named it, your name would be there. Right. Yep, you can have it right there. If you want, you can delete it or modify it. Got it. So if he has a reoccurring weekly schedule. Yep. Occupied, whatever. And then he goes in and puts in a holiday, Christmas, whatever. Uh -huh. It's probably unusual for the church because we'll be here anyway. But does that then override the predetermined schedule to do unoccupied if you put in a holiday? Holiday will override. Okay. Yes, a normal schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. And so they, he doesn't have to change his weekly schedule. He can just do the override so of the holiday. So if I have right. a special event of some sort, whether it's a Christmas Eve service or a, a wedding or something, like yep. that, I put it in as a holiday, and it'll override whatever. Holiday would make it unoccupied, though, right? Well, you could do both depending okay. on if it was unoccupied you could do a holiday to occupied or if it was occupied normally for a holiday it's Going occupied on. and you're unoccupying right. it with the holiday okay. schedule okay and then yeah with the drop down um so override is the highest override will override a holiday and a normal schedule and then holiday will override a normal schedule okay so it goes from highest priority to lowest mm -hmm. and that's just Yep. Got it. And right now it's occupied time for the whole building because we don't have the area. Right. So it's a different area. Yeah. Yep. 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 Makes sense. And then I would have to go in. So it's just going to. We can try to create one for setting. first floor just to. So let's say this was the sanctuary. Configure. Mm -hmm. so we want to add one. Yeah. be to come into that for that's a good screen to come to so you know how many schedules are already in that area because okay. if you start adding a bunch of holidays that list is obviously going to grow and that's a good just quick overview of okay do i have christmas in there do i have thanksgiving so right now this schedule is set under first floor so every single unit in the first floor is going to fall under this schedule that yes. i just put in here uh well that one will override it because we made it on higher priority okay um, but once you're able to put in different areas, yes. each area will be linked specifically to, to that whatever equipment. the units are. Yep. So when I'm setting the schedule, it's going It'll to get only me. do that area. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to go back out here and realize that like the sanctuary, I do want to be during or at different set temperatures than the rest of the building, yep. I have to change it at the actual RT units. Yes. So for, for yeah. its occupied times, and yep. the schedule will pull that Yep. Out. So if we had, sense. let's say we did have Sanctuary, you do the little drop down arrow. Oh, that's right. That is going to tell you, okay, it's R2, 4, and 5. So you could just click on those two it's instead seven. of trying to find in the whole it's list of R2s. Because yep. right. there's some areas where I might end up giving five degrees of being right. able to adjust it if that's. Yep. But in the Sanctuary, I'm probably not going to do that kind of stuff. Can you leave it to where he's got like, first floor is a schedule, and then there's a secondary breakdown of areas. So. He can schedule those areas, but if it's a holiday that he wants unoccupied, he can just I really like where you're going. Yes. Yeah. So it's got to be like a master that he can, we're going to be gone that day. We don't need anything to run. Yep. And he can just do a holiday event on the first floor. Still so do all the do all separate different. areas that we've yes. created. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, first floor is the same as full building at this point. It really is. Really Inlet, yeah, I mean, it is. We yeah. probably can leave it as Mountain View and then first floor because if we do end up moving forward with yeah. adding yeah. some sort of connection yeah. to even monitor up on top, I know we're all... You've already got until January where part of first floor. You're just doing a sub-schedule yep. for, for individual areas. Each area on the first yeah. floor. Okay. Do you guys need anything else from either? I don't think so. I'll get Mike set up. Yeah, get Mike set up. And then I'll, awesome. I'll call him and let him know. Yeah, just let him know the password and stuff. Okay. Um, that should be it. Uh, if you have any issues, give me a call. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yep. Got to do this again here. So. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you. Thanks. See you. Yeah. Good stuff. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for your See you.
here's an example. I'll just add a, well, if we go back to first floor graphic. Yep. So, like this one, we still have the first floor, but now if you drop it down, instead of it just being devices, now there's going to be another area. So I'll we'll call that sanctuary okay. or box. And then below that will be the devices for that area. Cool. So then, yeah, if you were creating a holiday schedule, you would just do first floor and it's going to do, and I'll do everything it. under first floor. Ooh, that's great. So yeah, the higher up you go in the tree, the more stuff you're affecting, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to a schedule. Perfect. So if you want to add a holiday schedule to everything under first floor, do it at the first floor. On right. first floor. Yeah, so if you had a, a wedding that isn't going to use the box, but it's just going to use mm -hmm. this, yep. you could just schedule those in. But if they're going to use everything, then you would you could just add the first floor schedule for mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yep. Everywhere you don't have to run, where you don't have to, it saves you. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, if true. I have yeah. the BAB is the same. Yeah. But rooftops for sure. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing. For the roof, I know we set our occupied set points for unoccupied. Any suggestions on what you guys? So right now I have 65 and 80. I think that makes sense to that. Me. And you, obviously you can change that just like the regular set points. It'll go back. So if we were just changing a normal one, um, it'll be there. It'll say occupied, and you could change mm -hmm. it. If you click on the gray, yep. Now it's the unoccupied set points. Okay. It's the same thing you can click the changes. Is that it is 65 and 80 what you would recommend? Is that a Yeah, so factory's 55 and 90, which I don't like. 90 feels like a lot. Yeah, that's a lot but of work for the units to I'd do, especially in the summer. Mean, we have something like 85 and for example, this last Monday, it was a really hot weekend. Yeah. We come in on Monday, the building second floor is at 85 degrees when we let it go through. Mm -hmm. The amount of energy it takes to then recover uh -huh. is significant. Yeah. So 80 feels about right. Okay. Does 65 feel? Yeah, I think 65 is Okay. I think going from 65 to 70, 71 is not that bad. But yeah. like you said, if it gets 90 and you have a hot weekend and you show up, that's yeah. those units are crankier. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm, when I'm setting when I'm setting schedules in here, I so it's always going to work its way up as far as priorities. So if I set a schedule on the first floor. It's everything below it. Everything below it. If I set a schedule first on the first floor. floor, will it override every other schedule I have in there under normal? Do, like, does that question make sense? Yes. If we if, have the other areas? If it's a holiday or override schedule. If it's holiday or override. Right. Okay. Yep. If you did another normal schedule, they're going to fight each other. Okay. Unless, unless they were exactly the same, uh -huh. you probably would never notice. But if one was 6 a.m. to 7 and one was 6 a.m. to 8, it's going to go unoccupied and then right back occupied for another hour. Okay. So it would go back to say that in general, he should only program normal each. schedules in each area. And if he's doing first floor, it's holiday, holiday. or override. Yes, I think here that's the best way to go. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Like you said, if the building's mostly unoccupied, Tuesday, you know, Tuesday, Sunday, sure, Christmas. Mm -hmm. You're way better off just doing a normal schedule and then adding your holidays. Add holidays to, yep. to the first floor if there's yep. a specific. Okay, that makes sense. Any other questions? I have a couple. Okay, yeah. I trending points. Yes. How do you trend points? So are they all set up to trend? <laughs> yeah, most of them are already set up. Okay. They, they don't all the tra available trends don't come set up because you'll fill up the memory in the iView super fast. So yeah, any device we click on is well, let's do a rooftop here, might be better. And then you get your trends tab over here.
is a concern I have for you going going because we don't have enough memory. Um, I'm not sure how many points it will actually trend and how long you're on the trend. That's a concern of mine and has been since. Ex explain that that to me. So if you don't mind, every set point, every output that it's got, you can trend it over time. Okay. There's a lot of things trending. There's only so much memory. Because the memory is within the idea itself, right? Yes. You can add a separate server or PC, whatever, with a terabyte of storage, whatever. And then you can store more data. Okay. But this is going to fill up fairly quickly because of it's limited to the box itself. So that's something that it said, let's let it ride, let's see how it does. Maybe you get enough, maybe you're good. Mm -hmm. I manual about this kind of stuff so that you know that but I look at trends all the time for all my stuff okay um, you may not have to as much but if you have a certain RTU it's like why does this thing keep getting hot in the afternoon you can trend it over time and see well what's going on oh the whatever is the outside air damper stuck open and yeah right <laughs> caught in a lighter whatever the after yep. you know pick anything but um, it's helpful in diagnostics it's helpful in a lot of things concern of mine to be concerned with. Okay. And with the standard, which is the ID, because we, we have three different IDs, there's a standard, a plus, and then a pro. Um, and you have the standard, which is the lowest one. So with the size of the building and the amount of equipment, I'm, I'm going to say you'll probably get a week of trending data before it starts replacing. The hardware, is it? Yep. Okay. So it'll fill it up as much as it can, and then it goes back to the, you know, the old beginning and starts replacing them okay. that way. Usually on a standard, you'll get about a week. On a plus, I think it's closer to a month, and then a pro is limited, obviously. I'm trending on average. I'm looking at data right now that, because I'm looking at, okay, I have this problem that you can come up each fall. You so right. I'll, I'll trend a year, a year or two, yeah. two years worth of data. Okay. Now granted, we have a very complex system compared to our twos, but even still, it's See how it rides. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense though. And it's just as simple as when adding a server to it, and then pointing all the trends and going like. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here's a good example. I just went to <coughs> RTU one, mm -hmm. and when you go to the RTU, there's a trends tab, mm -hmm. and then this will pop up, and these are all the available, not available, but these are all the points that are being trended for RTU one. Okay. So you can pick one, I just did outside air temp, mm -hmm. and then it'll give you the trend as much, as far back as it can go, you know, Which depending on space. Is that going right now? Is it today? Oh no, it's for, oh yeah, today. But you might only do it the day you want to show it. Yeah, so. Okay, so you're in there yesterday. Now can you, like, <laughs> select, I want to look at supply air yeah. and and set point at the same time. So, or room temp versus set point. So, where am I at versus, you know, you can so, look at multiple trends at the same time. Yep. So, we had outdoor air temp. If you hold control, yep. you can click on another one, yep. another one, and it'll just keep adding graphs. I think, I think after three, it gets ridiculous small. Where does it overlay them by chance? Can you do that? What do you mean by overlay? Oh, on the same graph. The same one. I, I've never been asked that. Sorry. No, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. I don't know. I would have to ask someone. Okay. That's really handy so that you can. Yeah, that would be huge. Yeah, if we were both on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Can we? Nope. That's a good guess. We can play that too. Goes. Yeah, we can mess that up. Any of those controls in the upper left? Okay. Um, and then, if for some then reason he needed to, we get asked this quite a bit. The engineer may be like, hey, we're struggling with this. So the engineer will say, can you export this trend for us? And it's like, how do you export a trend? Go right up here. You can save, you could either save the graph mm -hmm. or if you had specific trends you wanted, mm -hmm. 
And then same thing with reports. Like you're the commissioning one, you could do test and balance, check out. So yeah, you would have to save it here. So you could. So save as a JPEG. Yep. Yeah, to the desktop. To the desktop. Yep. Okay. And then again, if a I use this a lot, I don't know, you guys might not. There's an audit log. Once you start getting a lot of people in an iView and stuff starts happening and no one's admitting mm -hmm. that they did anything, you can go to this reports and go to the security mm -hmm. and do a system audit log. Mm -hmm. Who just who changed this? So it'll tell me if Jeff's been cranking. Who's logged in? Oh, look, Jeff logged in. Yeah, yeah. Two reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Jeff, you are. I doubt you'll ever need it, but just so you know, it is yeah. there. It okay. does come in handy. Yeah, it does. So, oh yeah, Brandon's changed all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> yeah, it's trying to cool his office down. Um, I had two other questions. Is there a place, and it's usually back end of stuff, and it's probably not, Brandon's the only one, the one that probably would care about this a little bit, but Maybe he's having trouble with an area, but he wants to look at the sequence of operation, call out the drawings versus how it's actually programmed. Is there like a wire map of programming so that he can see, okay, the drawing tells us to do this, but how do I make sure that what's programmed is actually what the sequence calls? Yeah, so these are factory controllers, so we don't have access to the logic. Okay. Carrier locks us out of it. Okay. Um, and then if you wanted a sequence for like a rooftop, yeah. they'll give it to you and it's like a printout thing, yeah. but it doesn't actually show the logic. They try to keep that to themselves. So from the factory, Carrier took our sequence of operation, what we were looking to do, pre-programs it from the factory based on that logic and then sends it. The sales guy who knows the equipment, yeah. not always the greatest, yeah. they're told we need an RFU that does this, this, and this, and they're supposed to know, okay, you want this unit because it should meet the sequence. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there somewhere in the controls though that he can see, um, it's like an if-then type of map? Uh, not, not for the factory stuff. Okay. But like the ERV, that's a program we made, yes. you do have a logic tag. Okay. And I think this is what you're asking about. So this is the actual logic of the program that yes. we had to make. Yes. But we can't do that on the factory stuff. Yes. Because it needs to so the real talk is the magic of black box. But anything outside of that, we can see the logic for. Well, even the VADs, you can. Yeah, because they're a black box. Yep. The magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I so, like that, the black box. Yes. Because you're right, it's all the black controllers. So what, the magic out of the black box or the magic out of the little the wire? Cap controllers, the magic smell. Else are gray and blue. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you ever let the magic smoke out of a wire, it's done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, there's this exact same logic in a rooftop or a VAD. Yeah. Okay. But I don't say we want to get to that all yeah. that often, but no, this is huge for troubleshooting. Yeah. Or just to see what, how a unit's working and what right. it's doing. And then last question I have: Do yep. you know if an iView from factory is set up to op to open ADR protocol? But that's a newer question that not many people have dealt with yet. So if you don't know, I don't know. Don't no, worry. we talked about that. I need to, I don't know if they have yet, okay. but that has been brought up recently. Okay, that would be something we'd be curious to know if, it, if it's, yeah. you know, some of them have it native and some of them it's like an added controller that yep. you can talk to them. Yep. I can tell you it's coming, the wave important. is coming big time. Yeah, so, that's why it got brought up. Yeah, I'll have to check into that for you. I don't know off the top of my head. So Brandon, if you ever decided you wanted to open ADR 2.0, would make it to where you would receive a signal from the city for Collins that says, hey, we're peaking, Electro electrical system is peaking. You can send a signal, receive it into your building automation system, say, and then you could have it do whatever you want. We do. If we receive a signal, all set points go up four degrees and cut the lighting by 50% huh. to save energy. Yep. And it saves you on your coincident peak charge for your electrical. Right. Hmm. So. Well, I think the last thing I got for you is alarms. Yeah, right now. Okay. Um,
at the top right, you see the red exclamation. <clears throat> that means there are alarms. So ideally, you, that won't be red. Oh, okay. But you'll even get an alarm if the VAV set point is 71 and it gets to 72 and then cooling kicks on, you'll get an alarm, but then it'll give you another one that says it's back to normal. Got it. So it's not always a bad alarm, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we had this issue the other day, I think Mike with Poudre Valley had called me about the economizer on five. It's something weird with the ERV. So we got our service guys coming out because they need to look at that ERV fan and the economizer. Um, I wish we had. I don't wish we had more, but I wish there were yeah. more to show you. <laughs> on the alarms, how can he set it up on alarms where it will shoot him an email yeah, if it's a critical right. alarm? And or can you set up some alarms just to send me an email, but if it's a critical alarm, I want a text. Yes, I would need your email address. <coughs> Um, and then to talk with your IT guy, because okay. I'll need your guys' mail server mm -hmm. address and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then that's just a process of me, okay, criticals, he wants a text, and then you, I guess just critical. I don't know if you needed a whole bunch of alarms, I'm just, yeah, the sanctuary is 90 degrees on Sunday morning, you probably want to know that. Sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You just got to be really picky about what alarms yeah. you do want, or you'll log into your email and I'll see 300. Yeah. Because the space tip went above, but now it's fine. Yeah. 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 I can get you all that information. Okay. That'd be great. Thanks and for I got to come job. back at some point when we get IP. So maybe that'll be a good day to talk to him about and go the through email them. stuff. So. Yeah. Because it'll actually be here. Yeah. Because, I mean, I could give you some of that stuff right now, but it's it's probably going to change. Right. Because we're on a lot of, I mean, yeah, we're still on the network and everything. Is, oh, yeah, we'll have to get on your network before I want to set that up, too. Yeah, it's it's going to be a little bit hopefully done here soon. But Okay, well, we're just going to leave the cradle point for now. You have that IP. Yeah. So. so kind of on that point, what devices, field devices, do you have out there that are IP that might have their own login, maybe even for field setup, and then really you're talking to those that need it, but are there controllers out there that here's – this controller is IPX, it's login is X, so that somehow he has that in, into his information. No IP, carrier doesn't have IP so it's all devices backnet. yet. Yep. So okay. it's all backnet and like field text, so you use field assistant. So then does the iView have, it, have its own login locally? Yes. And does he have that information? Not yet because okay. We don't, their network's not ready. Okay. So we're using our temporary cradle point just so everyone has access. That would be something that we'd want him to have. Once yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah. If the internet goes down, yeah, he could go in there and plug directly into it and get into it. Yeah. Yep. But as far as a rooftop or a VAV goes, you have to have a special cable. Yeah. And here you're charging up and yin yang for those. So I will break down first floor. <coughs> um. Are the mechanicals, I guess, kind of labeled what I can call areas as far as, like, obviously, you know where the sanctuary is, but. Yeah. Um, that whole big back corner, that's yeah. the box. Okay. That makes sense. Um, oh, it is labeled. Okay. Yeah. So that's the box. There's the sanctuary. We've been calling kind of the strip that runs all the way through the middle. We've been calling it the commons. Okay. I'm sure that's kind of broken up into different right areas just because yep. it's such a big, a big space. Um, and then 